Mystery Theater. Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall, practitioner of the seventh oldest profession, storyteller, spinner of tales, weaver of dreams, especially those that are dark and foreboding. An ancient poet wrote, forgetfulness, sweet and blessed forgetfulness, is the most precious gift of the immortal gods. For the innocent to forget and for the guilty to be forgotten is to receive finally the benediction of amnesia, the sweetest spirit of all. For amnesia sits patiently beside the never-ending stream of time, bestowing her largesse on the innocent and the guilty alike. Jerry? Jerry? Eric? What's wrong? Uh, I'm in trouble. Well, what kind of trouble? I'm scared. I'm scared stiff. Uh, now, now, whatever it is, kid, I'll stand by you. Now, wh- what did you do? I killed a man. How you... oh, all right, kid. Uh, now, now, who was it? A man named Jamie Parsons. Who? They said his name is Jamie Parsons. Oh, Eric. Now, how, how could you kill Jamie Parsons? I did. I did. I shot him ten minutes ago. No, kid, you didn't. Now, how could you? Jamie Parsons has been dead for 50 years. Our mystery drama, A Bride for Death, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Tony Roberts. We are still a young and boisterous country, filled with optimism and high spirits. At least we like to think we are. And we endorse positive thinking. We're convinced that the pot of gold lies at the end of the rainbow, and that sterling silver lines every cloud. And so, our language has no word to match one that is so familiar to the Germans, Weltschmerz which means a melancholy weariness with the futility of life. Which is not to say that we don't encounter it here and there. We do. But it's not really what you could consider a mainstream affliction. Well, good morning, Martha. Oh, I'm just taking your pancakes off the griddle. (laughs) Well, that's life. You know what life is? Timing. Now, you'll be there at that exact split second. Now, that's enough, Jerry. Two philosophers in this house at one time is more than I can put up with. Uh, Well, is Shakespeare down yet? And don't call him Shakespeare. Why not? He's a poet, ain't he? Oh, here. Feed your face and give us a rest. (laughs) Okay, okay. Uh, You tell me. Now, here's a boy, 25 years old. He's been to college. Means he's got brains. He's good looking. Means he's got no problem with women. Jerry. Hmm? I'm worried about Eric. Worried? (laughs) For crying out loud. What's his problem? Uh, I don't know. Well, it doesn't help that he can come running to his big sister any time he needs it. It's just that, I don't know, he feels rejected. Rejected? Why, that boy is is welcome wherever he goes. No, Jerry. He's actually being rejected by the editors. He sends his poetry into a magazine, and back it comes with a rejection slip. Well, I, uh... I read some of those poems, and, I, well, I couldn't make head or tail out of them. Oh, what do you know? Well, I know what I like. You know what he ought to do? He should get a job. He's trying to find himself. Oh, I pass. Good morning. Oh, Eric, you're just in time for breakfast. I only want some coffee. Yeah, you can tell that this is a city, boy. Eric, you really ought to have a good breakfast. Uh, sugar and fresh cream, Eric? I'll take it black. I, I've got this headache. Oh, look, you better see a doctor. Oh, no, 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 he doesn't need a doctor. He needs to have a good time, raise a little hell. Hey, why don't you come with us, Eric? Get into the dance at the Grange Hall tonight. 
put your arm around a pretty girl, the whole world is different. <laughs> I wish the whole world could be different. Now, hey, right, uh, you just can't get serious at this hour in the morning. <laughs> Uh, he going out for a ride, saddle up Duke or Admiral, and you just look at that sky and you just breathe that air and enjoy that sun. And uh, you know how you feel? I remember that poem you once recited when you were a kid. And uh, you'll say it again. God's in his heaven and all's right with the world. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high or... Oh, 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 do. Hold it. Hold it, boy. <laughs> I can't be. It can't be. It's a mirage. <laughs> Stay here, Duke. There's plenty of nice grass. Have your lunch. I have to find out about this. It's incredible. Out here? This type of architecture? Out here? Jamie! Jamie, darling, I knew you'd come... Oh. Uh, oh. I'm sorry, I'm not Jamie. Oh, I see. I, I've been waiting for Jamie to come back from the war. The war? Yes, the war. And now I know, now I know who you are. Well, uh, who am I? You are... You are Jamie's best friend, his buddy in the fight and Jamie fell and he died in your arms and with his dying breath he made you swear to come and tell me I'm the only one he ever loved but, uh, well, after I finish crying for Jamie you and I will fall in love uh, I, I almost wish that were true but uh, th that's not what happened I was just riding by and I was struck by the look of the house were you? it's fantastic this ornate, late Victorian architecture is so perfectly preserved. Do you like it? It's it's fascinating. Well, I think it's just too much gingerbread. <laughs> Granddad built it. I, I've never seen you around here. I'm visiting. Uh, Jerry Carraway's my brother-in-law. You can't mean Jerry. You mean Oscar. No. Oscar Carraway owns the farm over on Stillwell Creek. I think that's what they call it. Well, that's Oscar. <laughs> Jerry can't be anybody's brother-in-law. He's hardly a year old. <laughs> uh, I, well, I suppose we're talking about two different people. Now, if you're kin to the Caraways, I am going to invite you to come inside and have a nice cool glass of lemonade. Well, uh, thank you. Come on into the parlor, and we'll sit. I don't know what is the matter with me. My name is Julia Sanford. And I'm Eric Mills. I can't get over this. What? The um, way this place is furnished and that phonograph. Oh, yes. Everything is the latest from all the way over to Omaha. Everything is so authentic. <laughs> and I think the telephone is a great final touch. Well, it's just an ordinary old telephone. <laughs> old is right. Well, that's practically an antique. They used to have those uh, about the 1920s. I've seen them in the movies. Do you like movies? Well, some of them. What's your favorite? Well, um, I have my own taste. I, I mean, my favorite movie happens to be, uh, don't laugh, Birth of a Nation. <laughs> saw it at a retrospective in the museum. We saw that in town at the Bijou. Do you have a theater that shows old pictures? Old pictures, new pictures, any kind. Uh, everything here is, is so, uh... <laughs> so what? <laughs> well, that one word, it just covers everything. Authentic. Even your dress. Oh, this is just a silly old... Well, you know, nowadays there's no style. There's no set style. The girls dress any which way, but yours is definitely 1920-ish. Well, I should hope so. Dad's taking me shopping to Omaha as soon as he gets back from Washington. Oh, do you like politics? No. No, definitely not. Oh, don't you ever say that in front of Dad. I told you Dad's in Washington visiting with President Wilson. And he... <laughs> but Wilson isn't the president. Oh, that's right, he isn't. <laughs> I can't get used to the idea of that new one, Mr. Hardin. Mr. Warren Gamaliel Hardin. <laughs> There's a mouthful for you. <laughs> but, uh... Dad was against him at the convention. The way you talk, I... 
almost believe you. Why, you can read it in the newspapers. Dad is an important man. He's going to run for governor. You just ask Mr. Carraway if that's not so. No, no, no. What I mean oh, is... Oh, I hope it didn't sound like bragging on my part. Everything is so... You don't believe... You don't believe a word I say. All right, now here. Now just read it for yourself in yesterday's paper. Now what does that headline say? This is the Rocky Mountain Advocate and Messenger, July 18th, 1921. Even the newspaper? It's so carefully preserved. <laughs> preserved? Why would anyone want to preserve a copy of the silly old ad mess? You can always get a fresh one the next day. Oh, if, if only this period had never passed away. You know, I don't understand half the things you say, but I love to listen. <laughs> Do you suppose that I could call on you again? Oh, uh, well, I... I understand. There's a... There's a dance at the Grange Hall. How would you like to go? I'd love it. Great. I'll pick you up No. At... Oh, no. I... I better not. Why? Jamie. Jamie? We... We're engaged, and it wouldn't be right for me to go to a dance with another man. But... Jamie's been missing in action, you say, and... Yes, and everybody says he's dead. I'm sorry. And if I went to a dance with someone else, it would be my way of saying to the world that... that I thought he was dead, too, and I don't want to say that. I just don't want to say that. Julie, I don't think people would say that... You better not stay here any longer. Julie, if I said anything... Please go. I must ask you to leave. But, Julia... Please! Supper in a half hour, Jerry. Mmm, mm, that smells great. Now, whatever do you put in your stew? <laughs> Cooking is my business. <laughs> I have to hand it to you, Martha. It's a miracle business. Now, evidently, it's done wonders for Eric. He's chopping wood. He's humming a tune. Eric? Yeah, as happy as a jaybird. <laughs> What's got into him? You're cooking. Now, what else? Oh. Hello, folks. How's our happy little homestead? Oh, Eric, darling, I, are you all right? No, I'm not all right. I'm magnificent, spectacular. <laughs> What's gotten into you? Well, the French say, Cherchez la femme. Oh, you be quiet. <laughs> oh, he's right. <laughs> Oh? Well, who is she? Well, there may be one or two little complications there, but nothing I can't handle. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> tell you what? Tell me you had a museum here. Museum? Oh, there ain't no it's museum. It's a wild place, and it's a gem. It's authentic to the tiniest detail. Eric, please tell us what you're talking about. It's dedicated to the 1920s. What is? This museum. Oh, but there isn't any museum. Yes, yes, there is. Uh, uh, where? Oh, come on now. Quit pretending. She works there. I suppose she's the curator. Who? Her name is Julia. Julia? Oh, you'd know who she is, Jerry, because she has to be the prettiest girl in town. Eric, this uh, museum, just just tell us where it is. Got us down the road from here. It can't be more than two miles. It has the most beautiful garden and lawn. And the house is a perfect example of late Victorian. I think it's called the Sanford House. It's the most beautifully kept... What, what are you looking at me like that for? Eric, the Sanford House is, is an old ruin. It's falling apart. Oh, but I was... Uh... And it's so overgrown that if you didn't know it was there, you, you couldn't even see it from the road. No, I was just inside, and it, it was... Eric... Are you sure that you... I was. I was inside the most beautiful... No, no, no. You think you'd better see a doctor, Eric, huh? But I was. Eric, uh, do you want us to ride back there with you and and prove it? Are you saying that the girl, the house, that the... was all a dream? But I wasn't dreaming. I know. I wasn't dreaming. <laughs> And he wasn't, because we were there, too. Unless it's possible that we were dreaming also. Well, every young man should have a wonderful girl of his dreams, and it's just fine if that's where she stays. It's when she materializes that you can run into a problem. 
I shall materialize again shortly with Act Two. What happens to the past? Or put it this way, what is the past? Is it a record or an impression? Does it exist only as a rapidly receding and fading memory? Or does it maintain a solidity and a substance? Who has not remarked at least once, where has the time gone? Does this mean we really believe that time goes somewhere? If so, where? Eric Mills is convinced he has found the answer. I know I wasn't dreaming. Maybe you were, Eric. Everything was so real. All this is coming out of your head. It's your fantasy. But everything was so... I keep saying the word, authentic. She even knew your father's name, Jerry. Oscar. Well, it's like Martha says, Eric. Now, this is what you know, and... I never knew your father's name was Oscar. Of course you did. Not consciously, perhaps, but I can swear I saw... Yeah, the... yeah Eric, yeah. Now, now, you did see it. Now, you wanted to see it. You know what I mean? I mean, for some reason, you... You got a notion that life was better in the 20s. Wait a minute. Wait. 1920. Remember, Eric? Do you remember? Remember what? The Bartlesby Tavern and Inn. No, no. Oh, you do, you do. Up in Connecticut. Mom and Dad took us there every summer. What, what does this have to... Be? There was that poem printed on the wall. What poem? About the year 1920. The year the tavern was built. Well, I don't remember anything oh, about it. Oh, sure. Look, you weren't even four years old, and I, I recited the poem. And you were able to memorize it just from hearing me read it once. Oh, Mom thought you were a genius. I don't know what you're talking about, Martha. Listen, uh, let's see now. I was built in 1920 in a time of peace as a place of plenty. Let no care or trouble enter. Uh, oh, finish it for me, Eric. For love and joy are at my center. <laughs> you see... Well, what does that prove? I mean, that I could... That I could make up a whole thing about being back in the 20s? Ah, you could do anything. Jerry. Uh, what I mean is, with his imagination, anything is possible. Yes, and, and you've talked about the 20s. Oh, maybe I have. Well, as a writer, as a poet, would you have rather lived then or now? Oh, hey, now, what kind of question is that? Huh? He'd be dead now if he lived back then. He knows what kind of question it is. Whatever you say, I know where I was this morning. Yes, Jerry. Where you always wanted to be, back in the 20s, when, when it was easier to be a poet. Martha, everything is relative to when you were alive. But you'd rather have been alive when Hemingway was young, with Fitzgerald. You'd, you'd want to be in Paris with Gertrude Stein and Picasso. You feel that people like them would be more, well, more apt to notice your worth than the people of today. Well, what if that's true? I, I... What if it's true? Yeah, uh, sure. I mean, the... Twenties were a more exciting time to be alive, but does that mean that I could just conjure them up? It's real. It's real. I knew it was real. Julia. Oh, now, I said I could not go to that dance. May I come in? <laughs> well. Just for a little while. All right, but just a little while. Julia, I had to come back to you. Eric, if you're going to start that kind of talk, I'll have to ask you to leave. Right now. After all. After all After what? all, I am an engaged girl. Oh, listen. Isn't that a swell number? Oh. Now, I promised Dad I wouldn't use that word. What word? Swell. Dad hates slang. Julia, may I ask you a question? Mm hmm? What year is this? <laughs> what kind of a question is that? Oh, please, Julia. Only this morning you saw the paper. What year is it? Is there a reason why you wouldn't know? Could you tell me? 
<gasps> it is July 19th, 1921. You sure of that? <laughs> Honestly, Eric. <laughs> What's that? What's what? Don't you hear it? Well, I hear the train. That's what I mean, the train. There hasn't been a train here and. Oh, what are you saying? That's the ODP. The ODP? The Omaha, Denver, and Pacific, silly. Everybody knows. Are you sure you're all right? Yes. Yes, I'm sure. You know, this afternoon I promise you a glass of lemonade. I think you could use some refreshment now. Excuse me. I heard it. I know I heard it. Wait a minute. Hello? Hello? Uh, information, please. I can give you any information you want. Do, uh, you have a number for, uh, Mr. Jerry Carraway? Jerry Carraway? Well, I know Oscar spoils that child something fierce, but he ain't about to give a year old baby a phone number of his own. Um, do you want Oscar's number? Uh... What's the number of the, uh, the the movie theater in town? Oh, why do you want to know? I, I want to find out what's playing. Well, ask me. I should know. There's a picture called Intolerance with just the greatest... Oh, no. No. Oh, what do you mean, no? I'm telling you what's playing at the movie theater. I mean, uh, I mean it's wonderful. That's what I heard. But a lot of folks say it's a little too serious. Now, over at Council Forks, they got a funny comedy with that fatty Arbuckle. Now, he is a scream. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Anything else you, you want to know? I promise you won't laugh. Well, if it's funny, I can't promise. What year is this? Uh, you're a card, all right. What year is it? 1921. Everybody knows that. Thank you. Thank you. 1921. And here we have some of Amy's famous lemonade. Mm. Mm. Isn't it good? Mm. Mm. I never knew if the boys were coming over for me <laughs> or for the lemonade. <laughs> Julia. Julia. What is it? I'm so happy. Oh, now just excuse me. Hello. Julia? Oh, what is it called, Jean? Julia, are you all right? Sure. Uh, why? Well, some man placed a call from your home just before. Yes? And he sounded just a kind of bit peculiar to me. Oh, come on, call Jean. I was just, I was just wondering, should I call Goody, Sheriff Jean? Sometimes you are so silly. Well, better be silly than sorry. Good night. Eric, what did you say to scare call Jean? Call Jean? <laughs> Telephone operator. Oh, I admit, I, I sounded crazy. What did you say? I asked her what year it was. Oh, why do you have to keep asking? Don't you know? Julia, I could never explain it. And you could never understand. Then why bother? I want to stay here, Julia. Here? Here. Well, how would it look? Well, we could get married. But I... You, you what? There's... There's Jamie. World War One has been over for three years now. What would you call it? World War One. If you haven't found him in those three Why years... Why did you call it World War One? He has got to be dead. Why did you call it World War One? Because in 20 years there's going to be World War Two. What? <laughs> You're joking. Listen, there can't be any more wars. After all, we went through. Well, people aren't that stupid. Do you believe that? Well, what else can you believe? Julia, you have got to tell me. Do you love Jamie? Well, uh, w w the, what business is that of yours? I have to know. We, we kept company for a while. And, and when he left for France, he asked me to wait for him. And, and could I... Could I say no? Are you in love with him? Oh, I don't, I don't know. Are you in love with him? Well, I... No. But I...
promise you that You can't I... make that kind of promise. You can't give him what you don't have. And what you don't have for him is love. Well, how do you know? Because you love me. Well, what makes you think that I... You love me, Julia. You have to love me. Why? Because it's right. Because it makes sense. It simply has got to be. Oh, Eric. Don't waste time, I... Julia. There is so little time. But People I... don't realize how little time they really have. Come on. Where? For a walk. <laughs> but there's no place to go. Oh, yes, there is. We'll go to town. Well, there's nothing doing. Yes, middle. yes, I'll show you. <laughs> you are having so much trouble with Dad's old car. I can't get used to the way these gears shift. <laughs> well, here we are. It's beautiful. Well, nothing ever happens here. There's the drugstore, and the hay and feed store, and the moving picture house. And they just took the sidewalks in for the night. <laughs> That's a local joke, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the train. <laughs> well, let's stop at the station. Well, if somebody flags it down. <laughs> Uh-oh. What's the matter? Oh. Oh, Lady Haskins, I don't want her to see me out with a fella. It'd be all over town. Take me home, Eric. Eric. Yes, darling. I... I think you better go. Go? It's late. No, no, just sit by me for a while. Why am I thinking of a certain poem? I don't know. Why do I see the words? From too much love of living, from fear and hope set free, we thank with brief thanksgiving, whatever gods there be, that no life lives forever, that dead men rise up never, that even the weariest river winds somewhere safe to see. Oh, I like that. I believe it. That no life lives forever. That dead men rise up never. That even the weariest river winds somewhere safe to see. Would you write that down for me, Eric? Of course, darling, Here's of course. Here's paper and a pencil. Mm -hmm. that, uh, no that no life lives it's... forever. Mm. Oh, Eric. Eric, I know now, I know in my heart, that Jamie is... Jamie is dead, and I'm glad. I shouldn't have said that. But, but, but you see, now I know that our love, which is so sweet to us, will cause no one else pain. And even the weariest river winds somewhere safe to see. Here. Oh, Eric. This is the first gift you ever gave me. We're safe. We're safe here. It's just as I dreamed it would be. Oh, oh, that must be Dad calling from Washington, D.C. He's probably going to tell me about his meeting with the President. Well, I'll have more important news for him. And I want you to say hello to Dad. <laughs> hello, Daddy? Daddy? Julia. Oh, who is... who is this? Julia. <gasps> Jamie! Yes, Julia. It's Jamie. <laughs> And now, among the beautiful sounds of this beautiful world, we hear introduced a new note. And we know very well it must be a note of discord. And was the poet right? Is it true that dead men rise up never? Where has Jamie come from? And where is he going? I shall have the answers when I return shortly with Act Three. Suddenly, 
It's 1921 for Eric Mills, who wasn't even born then. 1921, a year of innocence and, most important, peace. Not just the absence of war, but peace. And Eric Mills has somehow sought it out as a refuge from the deceptions and the dejections of the jet age. He has even found Julia. But so has Jamie, Julia's doughboy fiancé, who evidently didn't die at Chateau Thierry. Jamie? They told me you were dead. They, they left me for dead. And for a long time, I, I didn't know who I was. And then I remembered. I remembered you. And I've come home. Jamie, I've got to I just got off the train. Jamie, dear. I'm coming home, Julia. I'm coming home to you. And I'll run from the station. I'll run all the way. Jamie, wait. You remember how I can so... run all the way? I can run even faster. Jamie, now. there is something I must tell you. There is something I must tell you. I'll see you very soon. It's Jamie. And he's alive. Darling, you and I, we love each other. But... That was before... Uh, before what? Before I knew Jamie was alive. Our love has nothing to do with anyone else. But Jamie still believes... A lie. Oh, don't say it that way. Well, how else can I say it? If you love me, then Jamie believes a lie. Oh, Eric, please go. Go. Quickly. Why? Before I get here. No. I'm frightened. Don't be. I'm, I'm frightened. here. No, darling, I'm frightened. Not for me, for you. Julia, there is nothing to be frightened of. He is. You don't know him the way I do. It doesn't matter. He's got a violent temper. He'll be bad enough to, to kill you. Well, I'll have something to say about that. Who says he can kill me? Is it better if you kill him? It's better for me. Oh, Eric, Eric, I don't want you to... To what? To be hurt. What can I do? I won't give you up. Oh, I don't know what to do. I am... Julia, you love me. I love you. We have a right to be happy. And Jamie? Sometimes there's only one way to say something. The only way I can say it is it's just too bad about Jamie. But I don't want us to hurt him. If Jamie is reasonable and sensible, why should anyone be hurt? Eric, he's here. He's here. Yes, darling. Oh, I'm terribly frightened. Listen, Jamie is... Crazy. He's always been a little bit crazy, but now... Julia. Oh, Julia, darling, I've come back home. Jamie. Hello, Jamie. Hello, ja Jamie. Is that all you can say? Jamie. Uh... Hey, hey, who's this? Jamie Parsons. Eric Mills. Uh, who are you? He's a friend. No, that's not exactly true. I'm more than a friend. Julia and I plan to get married. It... You what? You heard what I said. Uh, n never mind. Never mind what you said. I want to hear what Julia says. Well? Come on now, is it true? Oh, Jamie. Oh, Jamie, what? Now, is it or isn't it true? Now, Jamie, you and me, we never were really formally no, engaged. I, I asked you to wait for me. And I, I, I... And you promised that you would. Because you were going away. Now, let's get this straight. You mean... You... You mean you are throwing me over for... Yes, and why don't we just all sit down and talk and tell Oh, no, oh, no, no. No, you, you're... You aren't going to walk out on me. Now, never. Just a minute. Huh? Now, listen, I know you. You're slick and smart and smooth talking. And you hang around while a guy is off doing something important while, while he's fighting for his country. And you, you take advantage. That's not the way it happened at all. Why don't we talk about this? Huh? All, all right, all right, buddy. Now, look, I don't know who you are. But this is your lucky night. Now, you won't get hurt, provided you just... Provided you just walk out of here fast. Look, I know how you feel, but she doesn't love you. She's been in love with me since we're both ten years old. Now, you tell him, Julia. Jamie, listen. But don't I'll... you see what she's trying to tell you? She doesn't love you. Julia! Julia, you, you can't tell me that. He is not going to have you. No. Jamie, don't. Please... Put that uh, pistol no, no, away. No, 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 no. He won't have you. you please won't. don't kill him. Why not? Please. Who deserves killing please, more, huh? Jamie, what please. Do you, what do you think kept me alive all these, those months in the hospital thinking of you, dreaming of you, picturing how it would be but when I got back home? Well, I am home now, and I know what i got to do. I, I won't let you. Get away from him. No. no. Listen. 
Listen, ain't that just your style, huh? Hiding behind a woman's skirts. I don't have to hide anywhere. <laughs> I better let go of that gun. I'm gonna kill you. Let go. Stop it, both of you. Stop it. I... Jamie. Oh. Oh, who is it, Julia? Oh, it... It is... He's... He's dead. I didn't mean... To, uh, you saw that? I... I didn't want... Who... Who are you? Eric. I'm Eric. Who... Are you? Eric. The man who loves you. Oh. Oh, yeah. I need someone to love me. <laughs> I need someone to love me now. Oh, now that Jamie's gone. What can we do about Jamie? There's only one thing I can do. Give myself up. No, they'll put you in prison. I have to pay for Jamie. I'll turn myself in. No, Eric. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. You have to do it. Don't leave me. <laughs> wait, wait for me, Julia. Will you wait for me? I'm looking for the sheriff. Eric. Now, Eric, boy, you... The sheriff. Where's the sheriff? I killed a man. You didn't kill anybody. Eric. Where am I? Eric. Eric, did drink this. Now, 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 what has gotten into you? I killed a man. What are you saying? Who? His name is Jamie. Ja Jamie Parsons. We were having a fight over this girl I told you about, Julia Sanford. Eric, you have got to listen now. Jamie Parsons was killed... Way back in uh, 1920 or thereabouts. No! Please listen, Eric. Don't tell me I'm crazy. Eric, look, we found you wandering around on the road. I was looking for the sheriff. Eric, uh, now way back after the first war, Jamie Parsons came home. Now he was sweet on Julia Sanford. Now he was also crazy. Maybe it was what they call uh, shell shock in those days. But anyway, he tried to kill her, and somehow the, the gun went off and killed him. No, no, I was there. No, no, I no, 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 no. It was too much for Julia. After her father died, she she shut herself up all alone. That big house, it just went to ruin, you know. She kind of uh, lost her marble. Oh, you're uh, talking about someone else. Now, her dad, Big Jim, was my godfather. And so we go over there regular. Now, we bring her food and uh, we'll see that she's still alive. Now, let me show you. No, Eric. I think the time has come for us to show you. <laughs> No, this can't be the place, the lawns, the gardens, flowers. It was, it was like a park. Eric, this is the Sanford place. But the house, it's falling apart. Uh, now, you can see that... But it was so beautiful just yesterday. Oh, Eric, not yesterday. Fifty years ago. But I tell you, I... Eric, dear, when we meet her, smile. She gets very upset if people don't smile. Yeah, the bell. The doorbell. It's the same. Who is it? Morning, Miss Julie. Who, who are you? Uh, it's Jerry. You remember me, Miss Julie? I'm Jerry. Oscar Caraway's boy. Oh, Jerry. How, how's your dad? Why, just fine, Miss Julie, just fine. My dad is still in Washington. Uh huh? I expect him home any time. <laughs> but the president keeps him there. On. Oh, come in. Come in. The uh, phonograph. Uh, Martha's here, too. Well, I am so glad. How are you, Martha? Just fine, Miss Julia. And uh, we brought a guest. Oh, you know I don't like to meet strangers unless I have a chance to dress up first. Martha, you should have told me. But he's not I a stranger. Don't... Now, he's kin. That's Martha's baby brother. Oh, well, that's different. His name is Eric. Well, how do you do, Eric? How do you do, Miss Julia? Amy? Amy, please bring a pitcher of lemonade and four glasses. Eric, 
Amy's been dead 50 years. Eric, Eric, Eric. Now, I knew an Eric once a sweet boy who was home from the war. Uh, you mean uh, Jamie? No, 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 no. His name was Eric. We were in love. <laughs> so much in love. He didn't stay long. You all right, Miss Julia? I mean, is there anything you need? Now, he, uh, I wrote down a poem for me. I look at it every day. Every day. Read it. Read it, Eric. It is so beautiful. Oh, be careful. That paper is old and falling apart. <laughs> Just like me. And the ink has faded. I, uh, Can you read it? From too much love of living. From hope and fear set free. We thank with brief thanksgiving whatever gods there be that no life lives forever. The dead men rise up never. never. That even the weariest river winds somewhere safe to see. To see. La vida es sueño. Life is a dream, as the Spanish poet said. And even dreams are dreams. In that case, when are we dreaming? When are we awake? If we can't tell for sure who we are, how can we possibly know who we were? But whether here or in a dream, I at least shall be back shortly. Well, to complete our expedition into poetry, the greatest poet of them all said, All the world's a stage, and all of us are players. And so this raises the logical question. Are we a permanent cast? Do we keep coming back to play the roles for which we are best suited? Have we led these lives before? Well, you just listen to us again. And for an hour anyhow, you'll be able to lead a brand new life. Our cast included Tony Roberts, Bryna Rayburn, Marion Seldes, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs>